that thing about crushing up a leaf and putting it on your head, mm. man, I thought that was absolute garbage and nonsense. In fact, I still can't even figure it out. But let me tell you something. If you have a headache and you get a cabbage leaf and you place it on your forehead, it's going to take away the headache. No, what I found out through traditional Chinese medicine is because that cabbage leaf actually has the ability to pull the, ex the excess heat from your energy. The en Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Sharika. My name is Sharika Swaby, the Mind Reset Strategist. I am a life coach, published author, speaker, and the host of this show. And today I have the beautiful and lovely Miss Paula Herlock with us. Now, this is a very dynamic woman, but more than anything, recently she was a executive director of well, sorry, she was a developmental specialist at, at um, Sutherland Global, right? But we're not going to talk about that today. Before that, she was a geologist. She, she is a geologist, but she was into environment, rural environment. She was the executive director of rural environment, right? So that's where our focus is today. You know that I am into wellness and mindset. So that's where we are going to be focused today. So please help me welcome Paula Herlock to the show. Paula, it's such an amazing pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you, Sharika. Thank you for having me and thank you for being so young and getting things done. I am impressed. Like I, I'm like, wait, wait, this little picnic doing all of this? I am impressed. So keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes. hearing that. Okay, so first question I have for you. Are you born, bred, lived in Jamaica? If I'm born what? If, were you born in Jamaica, grown in Jamaica? Oh, yes. I'm, a, I'm born 100% organic Jamaican. <laughs> I was born in Montego Bay, so I'm from okay. Western Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, I went to school. I went to um, Mount Alvernia High School in, in Montego Bay. And then I came to Kingston when I left high school and did sixth form in Kingston at Holy Childhood. Okay. Then after that, I went to UWE. So I'm full 100% Jamaican. Never did any degree abroad. Fully Jamaican. Okay, beautiful. I love that. Okay, so my next question for you, well... It's more of an inquiry. Would you mind telling us a little bit about how you grew up? Um, I okay. So my uh, my, my mom and dad got married really early. So my mom was eighteen and my dad was twenty. Mm -hmm. So I basically came into you know very young parents, but very brilliant parents. My dad was brilliant. My dad was a musician. Mm -hmm. um, he's probably one of Jamaica's first one-man band so you know both left brain and right brain working because he's yeah. playing the music with his hands playing the music with his feet and singing and doing everything he he passed away in 2019 but I have a lot of how I am and how I think I credit a lot of that to my dad um, my dad built an electric car back in 1996. He wrote lots of songs. He was an advocate against all of what happened with FinSAC. Um, and, you know, after he passed away, he, he passed away in November 2019, which was just at the brink of the pandemic. Right. And I always laugh um, and say, you know, my father chose to go because he wanted to be part of the pandemic rollout team because he knew what the impact of the pandemic would be on, on humanity mm -hmm. and the consciousness of humanity. Yeah. So I think he opted to go. But my dad, you know, his death triggered my interest in, in, in African spirituality and ancestors mm -hmm. because 
I remember two weeks after he passed away, I I was singing. I, I, one of his songs just popped into my head. Suddenly, I don't know what that was all about. Uh, it, it was a song about um, give me my religion, my African religion, spirit of the black man. So immediately that that triggered something in me, in my consciousness. Right. And the other song that he sang was called The Answer. Uh, that also came in a few days later. And that song was, all of these songs were written like in 1986, 1990. Yeah? So quite a bit of while ago. And the song, the second song is called The Answer. We have the answer right here in Jamaica. We have Strong Mac, Blood Whisk, Saucy Perilla, Macapat, Cheney Root, Guinea Pepper, Kwaku, Comfrey, right. Joint of Young Bamboo. You know? And so those two songs by themselves were like a message from him to me after he had passed away. So it's very interesting that you asked the question about growing up and how my growing up and the impact of my father is impacting my life now and how I've showed up in the world and what I'm choosing to do now, right. given what's happening in the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. And my condolences on the loss of your dad. Oh, uh, you know, one of the things my dad taught me was that the soul never dies. And so it was interesting to watch him transition, mm -hmm. knowing that he knew that I understood that he his body is gone, but his soul, his soul. lives on. Yeah. And so there is, I feel as if there's communication between his soul and my soul still. I can imagine that you are causing a lot of contro controversy on the scenes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Especially among some uh, more religious people who believe Oh, well, yeah, we, yeah. Have, we have all conversations and, and I, I tell them very clearly that, yes, I grew up in, in the church. Mm -hmm. Both of my schools were church. In fact, I lived at the convent when I lived at Holy Childhood. But I also have a brain. And so <laughs> I recognize that a lot of what was done over mm -hmm. the last couple of centuries was programming. Yes. Of, of uh, centuries of programming. And so mm -hmm. I, I am very clear to everyone that even the Bible had parts of it removed and other parts put in yeah. to 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 contextualize the moment yeah. and what the agenda of the leadership was. I'm very clear and they know mm -hmm. anybody who who studied theology and understands who has studied all the religions, comparative religions, know that. So they don't argue. The ones who will argue are the ones who just listen to their past and don't question anything and have not done any research. Right. I'm not going to argue okay. with them. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. So um, on, the, on the basis of healing as a child, did your parents use, by the way, your parents seem like they were very knowledgeable and smart people from a long time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they were. <laughs> did, they, they were did they use a lot of herbs? For, for your healing when you were growing up, or is it that like No, no. I grew up in a very middle class setting. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with middle class comes the privilege of going to private mm -hmm. doctors yeah. and having any problem that I had was solved like this <laughs> because we had the, the resources to do it. Yeah. It was not until we got much older my dad and I were the bush people in our family, yeah? Right. My sister is a medical doctor. My mother tends to want to align with allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. I have no difficulty with allopathic medicine. But after reviewing traditional Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, and some other things, other things like um, herbal remedies mm -hmm. i recognized that there was a I, I resonated more with what mm -hmm. i would consider alternatives yeah yeah 
I resonated more with the herbs because that's what our forefathers used to heal themselves. True. So we here in Jamaica on our plantations, there were no health centers. There were no doctors attending to the slaves. Right. And don't we have one of the most um, powerful, healthy po um, populations on the planet? Like the fastest man comes from here. The fastest woman comes from here. Song of the century comes from here. Listen, that's not some random act. And we're a small little island. We're a developing country. Our medical infrastructure is subpar, to be very honest. Everybody will admit that. Yeah. So there's got to be something else that is underpinning the vibrance of our population. Would I, you agree? I agree, 100%. Yes. Yes. I agree. Um, I'm curious, what what got you involved? What, what made you want to study geology? Oh, I've always just loved rocks. I love crystals. I, I don't know what that was all about. I remember when I was little, mm -hmm. six, seven years old, I'd just be walking in the yard. And of course, St. James is all limestone. So every rock is white. Oh, okay. The dirt, white. Whatever is not brown is white. Mar limestone yeah. and I remember I would see the crystallized limestone which are the limestone crystals ca calcium uh, calcite crystals mm -hmm. so calcite is a byproduct of limestone that has gone through hydrothermal alterations metamorphosis mm -hmm. and uh, calcium carbonate that is so yeah. calcium carbonate is like what you would find in the stalactites and stalagmites of the of the caves yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you break a stalagmite open, you'll see crystals of cal 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 calcite. And I thought, oh my God, those are diamonds. I was like, nobody <laughs> would tell me that is cal calcite. Yeah. And I thought it was like this discoverer, and I thought I was discovering diamonds, right? <laughs> and that was just, that was how it all started. I had an odd, like an unnatural love for crystals and stones. And every time I would go to the beach or the river, I'd collect all these stones. My mother was like, you know, um, you have enough stones here. Stones anymore. <laughs> you know, I had collections and collections of stones. And my friends would come over and I'd be like, look at my stones. And they'd be like, um, mm -hmm. yeah, these, these stones are really stones. They're like, yeah. please fall off. You know? So, yeah, that's what got me interested. <laughs> okay and okay so um and this i imagine helped you to realize more of the connection between the earth and us as human beings yes um it wasn't until very late that i recognized the connection between man mm -hmm. and earth man and all of the natural processes taking place on the earth um, so we're connected to the trees, we're connected to the oxygen, you know, we breathe in oxygen, we breathe our carbon dioxide, the trees take in dioxide and they release oxygen. We transpire, we call it sweating. Mm -hmm. Trees transpire, we sweat. We all need water. Water makes up 70% of the planet. Water makes up about 70% of us as well. There are right. many similarities. We are a micro of the earth. Yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of the systems, the many systems that are on the planet, we have mm -hmm. many systems in our bodies as well, you yeah. know? Yeah. In fact, in traditional Chinese medicine, they believe very strongly in the humors or the humors being like the, 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 the environment. So in much the same way as we have hot weather outside, mm -hmm. it's hot and dry outside, when it's rainy, it's hot and wet. Sometimes it's damp mm -hmm. and hot. Sometimes it's cold and wet. Sometimes it's cold and dry. In much the same way, that kind of weather goes on in our body. And they believe it informs different imbalances in the body. So, for example, if you have damp, damp heat in the lungs, then you're going to have a cough. You know, and so they prescribe herbs to deal with the damp heat in mm -hmm. your body. So it's a very interesting study, one that I resonate with. That, that makes actually makes perfect sense. Just listening it to it makes perfect sense. Okay, now, um, 
we know as Jamaicans, we know, well, most of us, I hope, would know that there are certain things that you do with boil to detox your body, or there are certain things that we boil to, um, to get rid of a cold, certain different mixes of different um, bushes and stuff like that. I am like you, my grandmother would always take me to the bush with her every single, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. And we go yes. to mango and she would pick all kinds of things and limes and stuff. And if any one of us would, were sick, my mother would send me to our grandmother. So I do get that. So we know that we can use these things to, I mean, you, so you, you have a headache and they say crush up this bush and put it on your forehead or tie it on or something like that, right? So we yes. know that there is this connection, but what is it exactly? Is it the energy of the plants? Is it the, 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 the smell? What is it that connects us? Where is the connection? There are many things, uh, many components to a plant. So for example, that thing about crushing up a leaf and putting it on your head, mm -hmm. man, I thought that was absolute garbage and nonsense. In fact, I still can't even figure it out. But let me tell you something. If you have a headache and you get a cabbage leaf and you place it on your forehead, it's going to take away the headache. Now, what I found out through traditional Chinese medicine is because that cabbage leaf actually has the ability to pull the ex the excess heat from your energy the energy field yeah mm -hmm. no we have some energy centers in our body they're called chakras right. so we have one between our legs that's the root chakra mm -hmm. one about at our navel that's the mm -hmm. sacral chakra one in our solar plexus in our stomach that's the solar plexus chakra then one right here between you know, in line with our, our heart, and that one is called the heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye, mm -hmm. and crown. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So if you put a cabbage leaf, either on the third eye or on the crown, it is going to be interacting with the energy center that's there. Right. And it's going to be either contributing energy or drawing out energy. Either way, there is some shift in the energetics of the body and i think that's how it works i don't know for sure but i i suspect now in terms of ingesting the herb that's a whole nother story that's that one is logical the entire pharmaceutical industry is built on the on her her her, yeah. her herbalism right mm -hmm. the assumption is that every single plant on the planet has a certain set of uh, phytonutrients within within them. Right. They are chock full of minerals, chock full of vitamins. They're laden with antioxidants. Um, some of the metals and and are also in the plant, and they are in a bioavailable form. In other words, the the body knows exactly what to do when it comes into this into into the into system. system immediately. It goes, okay, all right, we need to break this down and pull this out. Yeah, we need that. So there are some um, plants that are rich in iron. There are some plants, you know, iron like callaloo, spinach. Yeah, There's yeah. some plants that are rich in zinc. That's your um, ginger, yeah, and mm -hmm. your turmeric. Right. There's some um, plants that are rich in copper. That's like, um, uh, what's that? There's a plant that grows in... Oh, watercress. Watercress is rich in copper. And I mentioned those three because those three are what people with melanin need a lot of. We need a lot of iron and we need a lot of copper. Conventional medicine doesn't distinguish between the different races and their needs. But let me tell you this. Scientific evidence has shown that the different races have different levels and constitution for you know their blood and their byproducts, their their milk quality. So most of the medical industry has formulated its medicine based on a 30-year-old white male. Baby formula is formulated off a white woman. It's milk. A white woman's milk is totally different from a black woman's milk. 
Mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah and so there are a lot of things that a lot of information that's hidden from us and so we're not able to take sound decisions about how we want to go about doing things because we we don't have enough information yeah. so i know what i know so i will opt to go with the herbs to give me the nourishment that i need in right. favor of pharmaceutical so you and i know that if you have pain them have pain bush pain bush what is pain bush french time yeah um if you if you're having if you want to get your blood clean then you know you need to drink the bitter herbs you can have a little bit of aloe vera yeah. you can have some seracy you can have some bitter wood bitter wood is like the king the absolute king of all the herbs in jamaica because bitter wood is a uh uh it's a blood cleanser mm -hmm. it's an anti-parasitic and it also um, helps with the liver. The liver, of course, is the workhorse of the body. Right. And when it's toxic, the entire body it's is sluggish. like, yeah. it's sluggish, yeah? And so mm -hmm. when you take some of the bitter wood, which is like so bitter, immediately like the liver just activates and says, okay, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? And yeah. he just is working. People don't know that. But yeah. country people know that if your head hurting you, bitter wood. If your belly hurting you, bitter wood. If your back hurting you, bitter wood. Yeah, and the funny thing. Were, were they right? They were. They were. And the funny thing about that is, they did, I don't think they really know why it's just been passed. They don't know the science behind it, but there yeah. is science behind it. There mm -hmm. is science behind it, and that's one of the reasons why I I wanted so badly to do wellness experience Jamaica at the time that I did it was to help people to understand that even though the country people and, 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 and our forefathers were not scientists, the basis or the underpinning principles behind the um, herbal remedies was scientific. All, wait, all the pharmaceutical people did, you know, they send down their scientists to come and walk the bush with the, the, um, the indigenous peoples and yeah. ask them what is this what one is this for? Story? What is that one for? What is that one for? Then they collected them, then they took them abroad, um, extracted substances, studied them, and then duplicated those same sub substances. So we're right back at square one. It's just that bush is free, pharmaceutical has to be purchased. So someone is making money from that process. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> mm -hmm. um how is okay so we know that there is a connection between our bodies and the earth and the sun and the moon and everything oh, yeah. right mm -hmm. how is all of this connected to our alignment both spiritually mentally and emotionally okay so we are a whole bunch of chemistry biology mm -hmm. some physics yeah yes. and a lot of electricity and a lot of magnetism right now um if your body is out of balance chemically it's going to behave differently than if it's in balance right because if your body is out of balance chemically it means that the digestive process is not going to be optimal the uh, elimination process will not be optimal. Uh, your respiratory, your reproductive won't be optimal. So it begins from the digestive. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When those things are out of whack, you don't secrete the right hormones in the right order. Mm -hmm. And so you have issues with insomnia when the body doesn't get enough sleep. The cognitive um, uh, function declines. When the cognitive function declines or the brain activity de decline, the brain does not effectively send signals to where it needs to send the signals to for the, the endocrine system to, to, to secrete at the right time for everything. So you see how everything can be thrown out by, by, yeah. by just a chemical imbalance. Mm -hmm. Likewise, a biological imbalance. It's the same thing. Everything gets just gets thrown out of whack. And all of those now go back to our mental behavior 
how the nervous, how the central nervous system is going to be functioning. Yeah? Right. Your brain function will affect the central nervous system because of the vagus nerve, which leaves the brain and runs through the center of the body, through the spine, and branches out so to nourish every organ. It sends the information to the organs and it takes information from the organs back to the brain. Right. The brain then tells, okay, I need you to do some more work, liver. Heart, you need to slow down, or heart, you need to speed up. Yeah? Mm -hmm. We therefore need to have the body balanced for the mind to be balanced. Yeah? No. When the body and the mind is out of balance, then you become totally disconnected from the spirit or the soul body because it is accustomed to having a functional system to work within. Yeah? So the body being out of balance, the body being toxic, the body being filled with parasites is not conducive to holding spiritual energy of a high vibration it will hold something some <laughs> kind of spirit yeah i think that would be on the demonic side but when your body is clean and your mind is clear then the body is able to hold high frequency high vibration energy right. and the soul is therefore clear and high function yeah mm -hmm. so this is how all of them are connected. I don't know if you can see how they connected. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know. I know. I just they, wanted to dive into it for our listeners. <laughs> yes, yes. The, um, in terms of the spirit, um, there are some people who believe that the spirit is in the form of light. Mm -hmm. And so the cleaner your body is the cleaner your cells are is the more light um energy or light frequency in the form of yes your, your spirit that it can hold and so you're able to tap into that realm quite easily you're able to command reality you're able to manifest you're able to commune commune with the divine Right. So it's all connected, but it really doesn't happen by accident. It has to be cultivated. Yeah. It has to be cultivated. There has to be some intention to what you're doing. Um, you keep your body clean and your body strong so that you are able to be connected and aligned with the divine. Yeah. And it, yeah. makes, it makes perfect sense to me. But for me, then it kind of happened for me by accident, right? Yes. So I, I got to a stage in life where I realized that some changes needed to be had. So I went on this journey of changing my mindset, and that included changing my diet. So I started, I did a lot of fasting, I cut out a lot of sugars and carbohydrates like flour and bread and stuff. And I also started eating more green stuff and and I always go for the vegetables and fruits but then I changed up a lot of things. I started meditating, I started um, exercising a whole lot more every day and I was on it and I was on it. And then the changes started to happen. Now this was not my intention. I did <laughs> because I had not gone that far into my studying to realize that there was a connection between Absolutely. all of that. So when so I, I, this is a lovely story to hear, yeah. Because um, a lot of people would not think that they're related, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm 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 so I'm fascinated by your story. So continue. <laughs> yes, yes. So I was doing my thing, and I started to do a meditation called Feeling of the Inner Body. I'm not sure if you've ever heard of. Um, oh, can you? Can you repeat it, please? Your sound goes in and out a little. Oh, um, yes. So I was doing a meditation called Feeling of the Inner Body. Are you hearing me better now? Yes, I am. Yes, right. I've never heard of that one before, but Eckhart thank you. Eckhart Tolle. It was Eckhart Tolle. Oh, yes. 
yes. healing of the inner body. Okay, yes. Healing of my inner body. So I was doing that meditation and I started to notice that if I lie down and I pay attention to my body, I would feel my body, like feel everything that was going on. I could feel my blood flowing in every limb. It started off with tingling in the fingers and so on. But wow. I'm not, yeah, it was it's, it's an amazing experience that I wish I had documented daily, but I didn't know what was going on, right? <laughs> Things were just happening, and I was studying, so I know I was safe. It was nothing to be um, alarmed about. But it led me from just changing my mindset and working out to becoming stronger mentally, to getting more connected, to feeling more connected to losing um, some of the perceptions that I had about life. And so my spirituality, spirituality, I realized that even going to church my whole life and all of that, I had no connection with the divine. <laughs> so it was a fascinating experience. And I do get the, the connection because I cleaned up my diet. I flushed my system a number of times. And I was working out and doing the mental work all at once. And it just excellent, came together. Excellent. Yes, came together. excellent. So I, I do get that part. I get that part a, a lot. What are some of the lessons that you learned from interacting directly with the environment as a geologist? Um, oh. <laughs> One of the lessons, one of the main lessons I got is that, like, you literally get smarter <laughs> when you interact with the environment. Oh, really? Because you get, yeah, yeah, because remember, the environment is an intelligence. It is. And it's not just an intelligence, it's a technology. Mm -hmm. And so when you see how it works and you understand how it works and you apply some of those principles to your life or to your body, then you get the results. So it makes you mm -hmm. smarter. It makes you more perceptive. And remember, we tend to think that communication is just verbal. It is not. So when you're in the natural environment, the environment is communicating okay. with you yeah. without sound, without words. It's telling you. It's teaching you. Yeah? So that's one of the, those are the main lessons that I got from, you know, working out in the environment. I also, um, another big lesson, cause and effect. Big, big. What we do has an impact on the environment. Mm -hmm. What we do has an impact somewhere else, on someone else. Nothing goes away. Energy can't be destroyed. Right. It can't be destroyed. It's just converted to something else. Yeah. So if you burn a big area of land, the trees disintegrate into ash. Mm -hmm. um, some of it goes up in smoke. Some particles go up. Then that's converted to cloud formation. And then it converts to rainfall. When you take away the forest, then you eliminate a whole process in the water cycle so you don't have um, the water cycle taking place because you don't have the medium which is the trees right. to go in the soil oh, to yeah. pull up the water from the roots to transpire put it expiration into the air for the mm -hmm. moisture to be in the air so this is what you learn through interacting with the environment cause and effect yeah yeah so those are the two main ones and unfortunately yeah. in Jamaica, I don't know if we're learning. No, it's it's taking a while. I mean, deep down we know, mm -hmm. but survival is at is our yeah. greatest priority. True. So we don't think about the long term. We're just thinking about okay, I need to survive now. I need to cut down that tree so I can make some corn, mm -hmm. so we can make some money, buy some <laughs> food, feed my children. That's yeah. it. True. That is it. Yeah. That is true. And then, um, and maybe if we take a moment to to um to think about it, we might come up with other alternatives. Oh yeah, absolutely. If we if we spend the time, but uh, nobody wants to commit to spending that time. It doesn't benefit them. They don't make any money from it, so it's pointless. 
again, short-sightedness and people not taking into consideration that there's a generation to come that if we take care of the resources, they'll have enough of it. Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about themselves now and their five-year plan and their 10-year plan and their 20-year plan. I want to know, we, have, we don't have much time left, but mm -hmm. sacred geometry, what is that? Mm -hmm. All right. So geology is a study of the earth and it's also the study of the crystals that form inside of the earth. Mm -hmm. Crystals form through um, volcanic and earth building processes. Right. So from the heat and the molten magma that's in the core of the earth, pressure and heat will push that up. It comes out of the volcano, it erupts, and that's how land is formed. Mm -hmm. Now coming out of that um, volcanic activity, there is a lot of heat pressure and there's a lot of water. Right. So when you combine heat and pressure and water, you get hydrothermal activity. Hydro means water, thermal means temperature be temperature um, related yeah. activity. And it is that hydrothermal activity that pushes veins of hot liquid um, that dissolve the minerals in the surrounding rock that causes the crystals to form. Right. Yeah? Now, when you take these crystals and you examine them under the microscope, you get the most amazing geometry. Mm -hmm. Beautiful triangles, squares, diamond shape, you know, different uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ten sided crystals. Mm -hmm. And when they studied those crystals, they realized that there was a connection between crystals and light. So you notice if you take a prism, which is like a three-sided crystal, and you put light through it, you get a rainbow. Yeah? And so sacred geometry now is all about studying how these forms happen in nature and what they create, how they behave around light and sound and so on. Now, with sacred geometry, they also bring in the circle and they use the circle with these angles and they get basically how life form seed of life mm -hmm. is if you put a whole bunch of circles around a pyramid or a, a, any of those shapes you'll actually get how cells replicate in nature mm -hmm. a cell when it's fertilized comes into two then it goes into four then it goes into eight and there is a particular pattern. Mm -hmm. Those same, even that process, when you draw straight lines through those cells, you get sacred geometry. So sacred geometry is all about the study of life and how it's created. The building blocks of life, the building block of solid, building block of liquid, the building block of gas, the building block of the body building block of nature and matter mm -hmm. yeah so it's a very big wide area of study but the fundamental principle is that if you take most of the different types of crystals sorry uh, types of forms three-sided um, shape, four-sided shape, five-sided shape, six-sided shape. Um, and you do some proper examination of them, you will find that they carry different frequencies. And so sacred geometry is about how shapes 
can generate specific energy and vibration and even sound. Mm -hmm. So it's a very complex and wide area of study, but it underpins everything. It underpins the universe, all of matter, all of nature, all of life, all of the frequencies, sound, light, um, uh, matter, everything. Mm. So it's a very interesting study. Uh, and then it's connected back again, as I said before, to light. And we also recognize that light is also related to what they will call spirit. So new age, they'll call it light, you know. I send you love and light. But in the church, they'll say, boy, we call upon the Holy Spirit. It's the same thing. Yes. You know? And so it's it's just how people call it in the time. We're now in the age where they're calling it light. Mm -hmm. Back in another time, they were talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on, Holy Spirit, fall on me. And another person will say, I want the light of the heavens to shine on me. I want the light to come through me. It's the same thing. And, and sacred geometry is the foundation for light. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have to ask you, is this why crystals are used for healing? And how? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So crystals hold the energy and the intelligence of the earth. Remember, I was telling you that when you're interacting with the earth, it's communicating with you. You might not hear it, yeah. but it's, it's, it's communicating with you. It's healing you. It's, it's pulling energy from you it's giving you energy eh yeah now the same thing with the crystals and the whole principle of crystal healing is that the crystals have the intelligence of the entire planet it holds hundreds of thousands perhaps millions of years of intelligence right. inside of it yeah, yeah? Mm -hmm. most crystals take millions of years to form and then we mine it, and then we have it here. We wear it on our on our bodies, and we feel good. We look good. <laughs> when they um they look through the pyramids, they found all the Egyptian pharaohs and princes and kings and so on. Their bodies were covered with crystals. They had crystals fused into their crown. They had necklaces filled with precious crystals and so on. And they realized that those people understood the purpose of the crystals. Uh, when you watch those Indiana Jones movies, yeah. there's usually a crystal and the crystal is put into this thing and the crystal activates something and you see this big light connecting up into the heavens with another planet. Crystals have that ability. We don't even know half of the power or the purpose of the crystals. A lot of the information is either hidden or lost. But what we do know is that once the crystal is worn on the body, the body starts to come into equilibrium. The body, the crystals know what to do. Um, man has decided that, okay, this crystal, because it's red, is associated with root. With, yeah. This crystal, because it's orange, is associated with the sacral chakra. Mm -hmm. This crystal, because it's yellow, like I have in citrine, and right. citrine is a crystal that nourishes the solar plexus. They call it a prosperity crystal because it brings in prosperity as well. So many things, yeah? And so they have, over the years, studied the crystals and found out which ones are associated with what and which ones, and when they're combined with each other, what the results are. So there is a very strong possibility that healing can take place. There's some people who absolutely don't believe and say, okay, prove it. And you can't. You can't prove that crystals actually do heal. But what I know that crystals do is that they alter the vibration of your energy field, your body, your your energy field, your auric field, right? And uh, I keep reading all the time that crystals are sentient. They're intelligent. And so even without knowing what a crystal is good for or, you know, 
you'll walk into a crystal shop and you'll just see this beautiful blue one and it's like you're calling me and you just go over and you go, I love it. <laughs> the crystal know that you're coming and the crystal is like, okay, watch this, watch, watch, watch the style, watch the style. Mm -hmm. And then you just go and you're like, I want this one. And yeah. The crystal is like, uh -huh. But the crystal knows that he is coming home with you to help you I... to nourish your energy field, to help you to heal. To help you with your anxiety, to help you with whatever is going on in your life at the moment. Yeah, but if you think about it, though, I can I can think about it and see how it it will heal you, right? Because yes, yes. when we get healed, or it's imbalance, right? And if yes, the yes. crystal helps to align you, then it's healing. It's really that simple. Well, for me, it's that simple. Yeah, <laughs> for yeah. me, it's that simple. It it, it is. Makes sense. It. it it's not a it's not a, a not a, like it's not a substitute for going to the doctor and having mm -hmm. an ultrasound to determine what the problem is but i think when they they talk about crystal healing they're talk, talking about energy healing energy so it does yeah. help to heal the energy field and when the energy field is healed then the body starts to heal because diseases start in the energy field Sorry. starts from your thought forms yeah, yeah? Because your thought, everybody thinks your thought is in your head, but your thought forms are actually out in your auric field. So that is why if you think negative thoughts, your auric field is going to be dirty, it's going to be, you know, not cool, and mm -hmm. then the body starts to get yeah. unwell. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. And and not to, not to mention the fact that, you are you attract what you are. So if you're thinking yes, yes. You're attracting. So I like I like the fact that you said that all you did on your journey to begin your journey was to try to change your mindset. Once you changed your mindset, everything else followed. Mm -hmm. Makes it, sense. Yeah, it does. It does make sense because everything every our fundamental problem is the way we think. <laughs> Absolutely. So, and most people don't realize that. So mm -hmm. It's, uh, it's a, yeah. All right. So um, let's see. Energy portals. What's an energy portal, and how does it relate to us? Why, an energy portal is difficult for someone to explain if they've never heard of it before. But an energy portal is almost like a vortex. You know how when you have a uh uh a sink full of water and you open the plug and there's like a spiral, spiral as a water right. goes that's a vortex and that's kind of like a portal for the water to escape right think about it now think about that happening energetically out in the open space of air right or on the land itself mm -hmm. now we have to understand that we are in the third dimension so we are in the material realm right but there's lots of other realms that are not material they're non-physical realms that exist and so a portal is the connection between one realm and the other yeah. so it might be a portal an energetic portal between the third dimension and another invisible realm or it could even be a portal uh, a, 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 a connection between an area that is energetically light and another one that's energetically more dense so for example they always talk about the, the Bermuda Triangle mm -hmm. which is a space between Bahamas and Florida and Bermuda there's an area there and they've always had a lot of really strange phenomena planes disappearing ships disappearing all sorts of uh, fa um, machinery equipment failing and people becoming disoriented time being lost and that is believed to be one of the biggest energy portals on the planet unexplained nobody can figure it out still jamaica where we are 
So, so let me just backtrack a little. Remember, we were talking about electricity and magnetism. Well, the Earth has some lines of energy running around it. Right. Yeah. Almost, they're almost synchronized with the lines of latitude and the lines of longitude. Okay. Where a line of latitude and a line of longitude um, intersect, they are saying that those are energy particles. This is what some people believe. Okay. And it bears out. No. I'm just going to re- share with you a very interesting secret that is not very well known. The 77th meridian of long longitude, 77 degrees west, is a very powerful line of longitude, and they believe that that line um, defines an energy portal, a powerful one. Um, when Christopher Columbus was looking for sailing into the New World, that's what he was looking for. They call it the God Meridian. Mm-hmm. But that meridian, they built the Pentagon on that meridian because they know, they know. The ones who know, know uh, about the ley lines, which are the energy line, line, lines of energy force. And all major capitals of every country run along these ley lines. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, man. So... London is on a ley line. Washington, D.C. is on a ley line. Russia's capital is on a ley line. Every major capital of every powerful country in the world is, is built on a ley line. Now, the ley line, 77 degrees west, that Pentagon is built on, runs right through Jamaica. Right through Jamaica. Mm. So, Jamaica is also a very strategic country for every country. Right, because that's why all people are so precious and strange and, 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 and powerful. Our soil is powerful, our herbs are so are powerful, our music is powerful, our everything about us is powerful, and it has a lot to do with that portal of energy that runs through this country. So portals are everywhere. There are some people, you know, all of these special rivers that we have that are healing, mm-hmm. you know are also on energetic portals. You can feel it when you go to a place that's an energetic portal. You can feel the energy. It's different. Kingston is a portal of energy. It's a big one. We all live here. That's why there's so much commerce here. There's so much everything here. They knew that's why they built Kingston where they built it when they were coming to Jamaica. Apart from the fact that the harbor, the natural harbor is here, there's also a portal of energy here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So that's what the energy portal is. Um, it's basically the, for, the, 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 the the space between one dimension or another where something tra- tra- changes over from one to the other. Mm. Yeah? That's interesting. I wish we had all the time in the world because this is a very intriguing conversation. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, I know you have things to do, so I'm going to oh best i can cut this short now so what impact do you want to make on the world the impact that i want to make on the world is to undo what they've spent the last 500 years doing which is to hide information Mm -hmm. from people yeah um we've been misinformed um stuff has been hidden from us People want the truth. People need the truth so that they can live better, more powerful lives from a place of truth and understanding rather than a place of deception and misconception. Right. Yeah? So I want people to know the truth about their bodies. I want people to know the truth about their minds. I want people to know the truth about their race. I want people to know the truth about their country. I want people to know the truth about everything that makes a difference to their existence because then their existence they're going to come from a different perspective when they know the truth about who they are and right. how they should be up in the world agreed agreed yeah perfect uh, and if you could attend your own funeral 
what would you like to be to hear people say saying about you? That she never business about nothing and she wants to achieve the objective and she did. I hope that I will be able to achieve the objective that I just set out mm -hmm. and that people will be able to say that, yeah, she achieved it. Beautiful. And my yeah. final question is, how, how do you maintain your desired state of being on a daily basis? How do I maintain what? Maintain your desired state of being on a daily basis. Oh, that's very hard. It's not maintained. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it it just is is maintained by being very present in the moment and saying, "Okay, you're getting too too um, you know, yourself. caught up with about this situation," mm -hmm. and basically talking myself down if I need to be talked down encouraging myself up if I need to be encouraged up because we wax and we wane. Mm -hmm. We are if 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 we're ever straight line like this, we're dead. So there is energy flux. It's waxing and waning. And so you just have to know that and recognize and 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 uh, accept that you can't be high all the time. Yeah. You have to have lows so that you can get highs. In fact, sometimes you need very, very low lows to be able to get very, very high highs. Yeah? yeah. So it's really just understanding and appreciating and accepting um, the cycles of life, the patterns, and then flowing with it. So you're not ever fighting anything. Right. You flow with what is in the moment. Makes yeah, sense. makes sense. You need the you need the down to know that you need to go up. <laughs> right, or for you to get the momentum to go up like a yeah. ball. Yeah, you need a ball. The ball needs to bounce on rock bottom to go high. Makes so, sense. Something. Makes sense. The trouble that most of us have is that we stay at rock bottom. So, right, or we we don't recognize that. Yeah, rock bottom has a little. It has a place for us. Mm -hmm. To be able to use it as a place to move Propel. from yeah. to go up, yeah. yeah. So beautiful. Well, um, do you have anything that you'd like to leave with the persons that will be seeing this video? I just want to encourage everyone to just keep on searching, keep on searching for the truth. Do right. not feel comfortable accepting what you've been taught. Do not feel comfortable accepting what's on mainstream media. Right. Do not accept what you've been accepting for all these years. One of the things the pandemic showed me is that a lot of what we've been taught was taught to us to keep us locked into a certain paradigm of thinking and behavior. And we need right. to challenge all of that now. Okay. So I'm mean, just encouraging everyone, instead of disagreeing, Go do your research. Go do your research mm -hmm. and see why that person is saying what they've said. Go yeah. do your research. The information is there. How did they find it and you will not find it? Mainly because you didn't look. So all you need yeah. to do is go look. Yeah. yeah? Agreed. That's what I'd like to encourage everyone to do. Perfect. Thank you so much, Father, for being here with me today. I appreciate it. I appreciate the knowledge share. And I know that the people who will listen to this will learn a lot. I have learned a lot. It was an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. And thanks for having me. And keep on doing the work that you're doing because you're questioning everything. You're bringing on people to have talks that are not conventional. And that's a yeah. very valuable part of, of this process that we're going through of, of awakening our consciousness yeah. so thank you for your, your role in that <laughs> it's, it's it's the mission right my mission is to help people to realize their highest self yes. so um that Beautiful. goes in line with the mission a lot so it's a pleasure That's to it. have you here and guys if you have not seen this book as yet it's called an introduction to freedom pick up your copy it's available on amazon and like this video share it with a friend um leave a comment let us know what you think and until next time, it was a pleasure again, Paula.
Thank you. Enjoy so the rest of your day. And you too. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. Um. End of that.